For those of you who watch my videos, you know I'm a great defender of our leaders who proudly proclaim their Christianity, but then are unjustly criticized because they act in ways that have you asking, from just what gospel are you getting your inspiration? Well, now you know. It's the gospel of St. Avarice. And one of the greatest Christian followers of Jesus in this gospel is President Trump. In today's video, I'm going to present an argument that not only should there not have been an impeachment trial, but they should have given him a medal for the way he handled things on January 6th and the raid on the Capitol. So I hope you enjoy watching Jesus would have given President Trump a medal. you can agree that these have been interesting times. Yes, the Capitol riots made some uncomfortable, but the major anger and discomfort I had is that the liberal Democrats were not able to see the genius of the leadership of President Trump in the handling of the events that day. When I watched that day unfold, I was upset by what I saw. It seemed that a lot of the president's supporters were raiding the Capitol and overwhelming the police. A few of them seemed to be doing damage, while others were looking for specific senators and congressmen. I'm not sure why, but as luck would have it, I saw reports on Fox News, which assured me that these people were good people and that the violent ones were left-wing commies that were there to make our president's people look bad. And a quick aside, I have to mention that I continue to be impressed by the way Fox News has the uncanny ability to see right through the smokescreen of facts to get to the truth. They are inspired by Jesus in the Gospel of St. Avarice. They're not intimidated by overwhelming evidence. They never confuse facts or reality with truth. But let's talk about the absolutely perfect way the president handled that day. Let's face it, the storming of the Capitol took everyone by surprise. Other than the thousands of postings on websites um, of a few radical groups and regular groups, and conversations of thousands of people on Twitter and Facebook, with hundreds of followers of the president and the encouragement of the president to mark down that day as it would be a day they would never forget. And what about the few hundred evangelical leaders who kept encouraging their congregations to get involved in that day? Other than that, absolutely no one could have known this was going to happen. Thousands stormed the Capitol trying to take it over and prevent the approval of the electoral votes and disqualify enough of them to officially make our president a second term president. Do you remember when the president, before he came and he had to drain the swamp? Well, now we have government leaders who were business people. And whereas people before in government had to solely depend on election, these great leaders found out that sometimes voting is not the strongest or quickest way to make our democracy great. These people in front of the Capitol, they waved American flags and Trump flags. They were obviously patriots. They wanted to make America great again. When gerrymandering and voter suppression really worked, and mostly white people voted because they understood what democracy really means. These people pushing each other into the Capitol and screaming, because they were nervous. They wanted our land to be a land of law and order again. And you know what my first thoughts were when those people first got through the police lines? Was how blessed we were that the protesters weren't black. The police would have had to use more violent methods to quell the crowds. 
There would have been many more injured and maybe dead. With the pandemic filling our ERs and ICUs and morgues and our temporary refrigerator trucks, we needed that room. Which brings up another point. I have to keep hearing from my misguided liberal friends about the death toll of COVID-19 related deaths. Now, as I'm doing this video, they're telling me that that number is close to a half a million. That number is nowhere, anywhere near accurate. Do you honestly think that our great president would have ignored numbers like that and not spent all his time on saving lives and getting more people vaccinated quickly instead of spending all his time trying to overturn the election? Just what kind of man do you think he is? Instead of vilifying the president for his actions, he should be praised. It could have been worse. Remember, it was our great president who told them that they'd have to fight like hell or they'd have no country anymore. These people were close to losing their country while having to tolerate the demand to stay away from family and friends and even wear a mask. I am sure that when the president warned them about their government being stolen from them, they were haunted by the fact that it would not be long before there'd be no Second Amendment. They knew it was just a matter of time before all their freedoms would be taken away and that their land of law and order would be replaced by socialism and maybe even windmills everywhere. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, there's just too many frightening thoughts. Now, when we come back for part two, we'll continue our argument as to why President Trump deserved a medal for the way he handled the raid on the Capitol. I hope you'll come back for part two. Thank you.